guys, welcome or welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about why your boundary setting might not be working. This is sort of a follow-up to a short I posted a while ago on how to assert your needs according to the DBT acronym DEAR. As you know, I don't love shorts because I have so many more caveats to mention. And one of the caveats that I was thinking about with that short is that even after you assert a need or set a boundary, a lot of times people are surprised that it doesn't work. It has no effect on the other person's behavior. It doesn't actually get their need met. And so that's what I wanna talk about today, some possible reasons why that might be happening and what your options are moving forward. Now, before we get into the meat of it, I do have to just mention, I know there's been this whole trend of saying boundaries are for you, they're not for other people going around. And I don't 100% agree with that. I think it's a tempting thing to say because it gives us a higher degree of internal locus of control. We feel like, oh, the boundaries for us, we are the ones who can meet our own boundaries. But in reality, boundaries sometimes are for other people, you know, like when you're saying, I don't want you to cheat on me, I'm not going to be with someone who's going to cheat on me, the boundary is for the other person, they can't cheat on you, the consequence is for yourself, so you can then say, I will leave a relationship if you cheat on me. The consequences for yourself, but the boundary is in fact for them. So let's just keep that in mind because I just know someone's going to comment boundaries are for you, not for other people. And you know, that's fine if that's the way that you look at it. But I think we're essentially talking about the same construct, but the consequence of the boundary has to be for you, not necessarily the boundary that you're asking someone else to respect. Think for a moment on someone difficult in your life. And I want you to reflect on what kinds of boundaries or requests would you ask of them? If this person came up to you and said, hey, Jeff, I have 10 minutes. I, for once in my life, want to listen to what you need in this relationship. Tell me a list of everything that you need for me to feel good in this relationship. What would you ask of them? And then look at that list. Is it realistic? In a lot of cases, no, it's not realistic because first of all, this person isn't going to come up to you and say that to you. They're not gonna say, hey, Jeff, tell me everything I could do to make life better for you. A lot of people don't do that. But it's also not realistic because of a lot of the contents I imagine are in that list. Now I imagine your list is comprised of basically two camps. One camp is very small, specific requests, and one is more overarching, big theme requests that you have of them. So something small might be, hey, please try to be on time. Something big would be, please respect my time. So you see how the small thing is just one little symptom of the big thing that obviously is going to be a lot more unrealistic that the person's going to be able to respect for you. So there are a few problems with this. First of all, people might be able to make small adjustments for you in small increments, like saying, okay, I will be on time or I'll try to be on time. I'll only be 15 minutes late to the next few get togethers that we have, but you're unlikely to be able to change big picture things about who they are as a person or who they are in relation to you. You're essentially asking a person to change the very essence of who they are. If you're asking them, please listen to me when I speak, please care about my needs, not just yours, you're asking them to do something that is probably not realistic. Needs like that might be indicating you want them to be more empathic, more attentive, not selfish, more considerate of other people. But if they were to change that about them, then they wouldn't be them. They'd be a different person. You're basically asking them to change their very character. I do believe that people can change. I'm not one of those people that says, you know, people or people with personality disorders or just people in general can't change. I do think people can change but they have to want it and they have to be committed to it and put in the work because otherwise, yeah, they're probably not gonna change if they're not in that stage of change themselves where they feel very motivated and they feel like the pros of changing outweigh the cons. That's like when people show up to therapy not because they themselves want to work on something but because someone has sort of forced their hand into it. It's kind of like putting a Band-Aid on an internal infection. It's not gonna do very much to solve the root problem. Problem number two is honestly, 
You shouldn't have to ask someone in your life who supposedly cares about you and treats you with respect to do just that, to treat you kindly, to treat you respectfully, to give you a basic modicum of human dignity. That's why personally, you know, personally, don't get mad, it's just what I do. When I notice a pattern of disrespect or unkindness from someone in my life, I just distance myself. I don't tell them what I notice because I shouldn't have to tell someone hey, could you please see me as a human being? A lot of people don't like this take and they say, oh, well, it's passive aggressive or you should let the person know. You do you. You know, I certainly understand that there's an element of self-respect in advocating for your needs and in saying, hey, you hurt my feelings in X, Y, and Z way. But I've just had some bad experiences where when I did do that, the person reacted very explosively and it just caused much more problems for me further down the line to the point where I said, you know what, I don't want to have to deal with this. If someone's character is clearly not aligning with what I'm looking for for someone in my life, I would rather forego the drama and just distance myself. Now imagine that you found out your friend has been gossiping about you behind your back. They've done this for years and finally you muster up the courage to say something, to say, hey, please stop gossiping about me, please. Like, can you speak nicely of me? Maybe they do. Maybe they change their ways. They say, oh, this really bothered Emma. I'm going to speak more kindly or not say anything mean about her to other people. Maybe they keep that up. But did the core issue get resolved? Why were they speaking ill about you before? Do they see you as beneath them? Do they see you as an easy target? Do they have their own personal issues that they're, that they're trying to detract from? What is the reason that this has happened? Again, it's putting a band-aid on an internal infection. Ask them to please treat me kindly, please respect me. You can't force someone, and even if you can, why would you want to? Why wouldn't you want to be in relationships with some of the many people out there that just naturally respect you and see you as worthwhile? And the third issue is that if they do happen to change for you, it's only a matter of time before old ways are bound to sink back in because you're asking them to not be themselves. If you're asking someone for one of those big requests that I mentioned or for a small request that's part of a bigger problem, it's bound to fail and their ability to respect your boundary will be short term at best. In my experience, people tend to hide their true colors for about six months to a year and a half. A year and a half is definitely the longest I've seen it go. A year and a half is usually when cheating comes to the surface, when people tend to break up, people start to feel differently about each other, but usually, you know, about six months, definitely the more common option. So will you be able to put up with this behavior in six to 18 months if you have to ask the person again? You know, let's say that this person stopped gossiping about you for six to 18 months. No problems during that time. Then a year later, starts back up. Are you prepared to have that conversation again of, please treat me kindly, please respect me, please see me as not beneath you? Because that doesn't sound very appealing to me, frankly. Now, I'm not a big fan of the hyper-individualism that has taken America by the chokehold recently. And I'm not gonna tell you to just end a relationship because I don't know your life, I don't know your relationship, I don't know you. But I do want you to get very clear about what your options are in this situation. The way I see it, you have only a couple of options. One option is to just continue setting the same boundary over and over again, knowing fully well that it hasn't worked thus far, but hoping it will still change in the future. If that doesn't work, you can practice emotional regulation or you can practice radical acceptance, or you can end the relationship. The issue is that a lot of people set these very big picture boundaries with people in their life, you know, with family, friends, loved ones, basically begging them, please treat me kindly, please treat me the way that I want to be treated. Things that should be a given, but for some reason that person is just not able to provide for them. It's very unlikely that you can force someone else to change the very essence of who they are. People need to be ready for change, they need to be motivated for it, they need to put in the work. Is it possible that you can convince them to swing towards that? It's possible, but usually it takes a whole lot more than that. And when people find that their boundary setting doesn't work, like, oh my god, I told my mom to respect my privacy and she didn't, again, for the 20th time. Yeah, like, why would you expect a different outcome if you've done this 19 times and it didn't work? 
of course, it's probably not going to work the 20th time either. People don't want to accept that. They get increasingly frustrated. They don't understand why it's not working. They don't know what else to do. They're starting to get really angry and resentful. The truth is there's nothing else you can do. There's no way that you can force this person to change their mind, to change the essence of who they are. That's not within your power. You're not omnipotent. You can either continue doing what you've been doing up until now that obviously hasn't been working, or you can do one of the very few things that's actually within your control. Emotion regulation, acceptance, ending the relationship. You have to understand this. You have to get there on your own, not just me saying it to you. You have to physically feel how cornered you are in the situation, that there's nothing you can do that will actually get this person to respect your boundary before you feel prepared to accept things that they are or take a different approach. You need to get to that point where you understand on a very emotional, deep level that you cannot force another person to change because that is not something within your control. And honestly, it's not even your right to do so. Again, I don't know what the right choice is for you. That's for you to make, but I'm a big proponent of getting very clear on what's within our control and what's not within our control. And the behavior of other people that's always out of our control, no matter how much we like to delude ourselves that we're that powerful over other people's actions, we're not. Whether we like it or not, we're not. So reassess your options, see what's the best choice for you. If you've been doing the same thing over and over and it's not working, see if maybe it's time to try something new. I get that it's frustrating. I get that you shouldn't have to ask someone to treat you with kindness and respect, especially over and over and over again, but that's life. It's not fair. Maybe there can be a little bit of empowerment in acknowledging that. I know for me, it can be. Take care.